Hello and welcome to the Catch Light Show. I'm your host, Bob McClenahan, and I'm here with a very special guest, Suzanne Becker Bronk. Kind of a little tongue twister there. If you say it, if you say it too quickly, I think it I think it would kind of twist my tongue. Um, and uh, her website is photodance.com, and um, I think we'll kind of pull that up here pretty soon. Here we can take a look at some of those examples. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was uh, we are drinking Sarah Francis. Uh, 2011 Cabernet Sauvignon from Andy Beckstoffer's George III Vineyard in uh, Rutherford. And um, here. Thank you. Know that. <laughs> Cheers. Delicious. Uh, thank you for joining me. It's uh, quite an honor to have you on the show. I've, I've been kind of paying attention to your, to your work for a while now. And um, I love it. Thank you. Um, and I know I tried to get you on the okay, show. Okay, we're done now? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was good. No, no, no. We got, we got a long time. No, sorry. So we, um, uh, I, um, but I tried to get you on a few months ago, and then for some reason couldn't make the schedule work. But um, anyway, I'm glad, glad you're on here now. Thank you. Thank you. So I had uh, first seen your work when, um, I forgot his name, Mr. Caldwell. John Caldwell. John was here, actually in, in the oh, studio. Oh, he was here? Oh, and he was doing a show and he had some like marketing material that he was like handing out or something like that and i was like looking through this brochure of images and i was like these are awesome i love this Thank i love you. the style and and it just so fits with the, his winery you know and and uh, so anyway so then i found out that it was that it was you who were taking the picture so ever since then i've been kind of following your work Thank you. so uh tell me how did you how did you get involved with uh doing mr caldwell's work I've been photographing in the valley for about 20 years, and um, I, I'm not sure how long ago it was, but I think it was, was it 2010. I think it was five years ago. Um, Larry Chai from Moonsai mm -hmm. Wines, um, who's a friend, asked me to do some photography, and at the time I hadn't been doing winery photography, so I encouraged him to find a photographer who does winery photography. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, as, as these things go, I couldn't resist, and Larry's just a wonderful person. Anyway, he's, he's a custom crush client at mm -hmm. Caldwell Vineyard, and so I did a photo shoot with Moon Sai, and that photo shoot involved the Caldwells, mm -hmm. and then um, Joy Caldwell asked to see the work that I had done for that shoot, and then we started, I started photographing for them, That's happily. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very, it's, very happily. Yeah, I love working with them. Yeah, I love working with the, the Moon Sai as well. Oh, great. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't know you were with them too. But um, I mean, I, I love your work. You can see some examples of of her work um, on her website, photodance.com, here on on the screen. Um, you can just see some of the images that are floating through. And um, I'll we'll talk about it now. But I was going to talk about it later. Was your post -pro post processing? You have a definite style. Thank you. Post processing. Thank you very and much. And I think that it's easy to recognize one of your images out of probably anybody else in the valley that I know of. You are like saying everything that just is making my heart sing. Oh. <laughs> Truthfully. So and so what I've noticed is that a lot of the images um, they're either completely desaturated or mostly desaturated colors. The the colors are very muted. Um, and then obviously a lot of the black and white work too. So is I wouldn't that, agree is with that. that. Is that no, conscious? I wouldn't no? agree with that. Okay. I wouldn't agree with your characterization of the, of the color um, at all, actually. Um, I work as many of us do with, in Adobe Camera Raw. Mm -hmm. And um, in Camera Raw, there are a thousand billion ways to convert an image to right. black and white. And there are you know, a thousand billion color choices and um, desaturate's not one I use. Okay. <laughs> so I guess that's why, um, uh, but I have, you know, a, a f I definitely have a consistent style. I mm -hmm. have a set of formulas for my black and whites. Mm -hmm. And then I, so I, I convert, basically do that processing and then I adjust as the image dictates to me. Right. And then uh, with color, I mean, I wouldn't call that desaturated at all. I, I, my feeling about color, so the black and white is definitely a warm black and white, which may be why you feel like it's desaturated, um, but I definitely put warmth in all, really all my black and whites, mm -hmm. um, but, which is inside baseball too boring, but the color, um, I would say my 
hallmark with color is um, I try to stay pretty true. I'm not big on highly saturated color, and I know some photographers really love that, mm -hmm. and I um, I understand that, but I don't I don't desaturate the color. Okay. Definitely not. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, they just have a. I always felt they just had a specific look, and in, in one of the. Well, thank you. The, um, yeah. And it's like like in regards to color, I thought it was always just kind of a little bit. It was subtle. It was subtle well, thank color. Thank you. Thank and you. And it wasn't, you know, like what I do. I punch up the vibrance. Of yeah, the, and you I know. get that, and I, I think um, that's wonderful as well. I I um I get that. Um, especially when you're, it's mustard season around here, so. You don't need to punch it up. The mustard <laughs> yeah. is so amazing. I um, photograph. Well, we've all been photographing the mustard, and it's just been unbelievable this year. Yes. And uh, so there's no I need know. to saturate it. It's I know. Just... We, we missed it last year because there was no rain, and so it was just yeah. dirt around here. Yeah. So, um, one thing I, I kind of wanted to talk about was yeah. just the fact that I love my job. This is the first time I've actually ever had a job that I actually really, really loved. And it's because of it's because of the access I think that that I get. Um, so I was just kind of thinking, you know, last week I'm shooting uh, for this magazine article, and I'm going to all these people's homes and taking their photos. These are people that are Napa Valley celebrities, you know, chefs and winemakers and you know business owners and that sort of thing. Um, and then um, today, um, I'm shooting uh, some stuff with, with Bottle Rock. Um, That's fun. Yes. Um, next, uh, starting tomorrow, um, I've got, um, God, there's a <laughs> bug flying around me. Uh, I got Premier Napa Valley. Um, so I'm shooting all this. And so I get to go to all these very cool parties, and all these, just the, the best events in, in Napa. And I just feel like I'm so lucky. And I just, anyway, I was just thinking, how much, how much do I love that? I love being able to just kind of do all the coolest stuff in Napa, you know, just because I'm carrying a camera. So. Well, then you're in the right place, the right time, yeah. doing the right thing. Good yeah, for you. maybe so. So, uh, so what, what do you love most about photo, being a photographer? Uh, certainly the relationships, so, which is different than you described. Mm -hmm. I think you work, you work, um, you have a lot of different clients and you do a lot of different things. I have a few clients and I work very, I feel deeply with those clients mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, they are incredible. I mean, I just, you know, I, I am really fortunate as you feel too, that mm -hmm. um, to work with these amazing people. But having said that, so that's one piece. And the other piece is, um, you know, this is what I do for relaxation as well. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> to be able to access kind of the intellectual part of my brain and then also the, the creative part of my brain and merge them into one is just amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. I sometimes um, you sort of have to pry me, pry me away from the computer because then there's the, you know, there's the shooting and then there's the processing, but then there's that next step where you're taking an image and making it sing. And that's mm -hmm. just, that's just, you know, be still my heart. That just does it for me. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, so, I, I totally agree. I know that when I'm, when I'm out on a photo shoot, um, you're looking at the camera, you know, you're checking to make sure the exposure is okay and you know, that sort of thing. Um, but the real fun begins for me when I get back into Lightroom and you know i start adjusting the sliders and you know and and really kind of making that raw file come to life you know and so i yeah i i, I definitely know that feeling and it's um i always love it when i'm i'm taking on a photo shoot or taking photos and you just capture that one image and you're like Dude, I'm done. It was yeah, just, it was just and you like, know it. You just kind of like drop it. the mic and walk away because you, you know, know it. this yeah. is this is it. That's 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 it. I just got I just got the image of the day, you know. And I and a lot of times I just, you know, if it's late in the day, then we just call it. If it's not, then we say, okay, well, we've done that. Let's let's go do something yeah. else and have some more fun, you know, you know, with a different different angle and try to come up with something new. But um, anyway, I just kind of wanted to share that with people. Uh, so, talked about what you love. 
what are some of the challenges that you face as a photographer? Um, I took a, should I look at you or look at me? Uh, you can look at me or the I camera. Look camera. As, a camera look as much as possible. But Susan's it's... beautiful, so I'll look at Susan. <laughs> <laughs> and DDA? DDA. DDA. DDA is very handsome as well. Um, I, um, it's just, I feel like I have to look at a human, not a, um, I, I think sifting through, hi DDA, <laughs> sifting through um, everything that's coming at us mm -hmm. as a photographer is probably the difficult part because I'm so easily taken in by this cool new thing and I want to read about it and then I'm spending time thinking about it and then I'm not working on my images mm -hmm. or I'm not photo or shooting and it's, I have to, I have to be disciplined. I think the yeah. challenge for me is to be disciplined and not um, kind of taken in. And I certainly have been like taken in by, you know, it's spending money for sure on things that I really didn't need just because they just yeah. seem cool and new. Right. And um, my best example is the Lytro camera. I don't know if you... I have one. You have one? <laughs> like, I have one. I've used it for about three days. I, and me too. I, like, I, I know. And I spent like $500 on it. And, I was, yeah. and, it just, and I, I saw the Intel just came out with something, that a tablet that mm -hmm. has a similar concept. And I, um, that's always like a good example to me. Or something, a, a, yeah. a, a, um, a, um, a warning to me that, yes, something seems really cool, but... Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a tool that I'm going to use and I'm going to need? So, yeah, or yeah. can I do something another way? Right. So, um, but I'd say that's the biggest challenge. That was, other than that, I don't. I mean, I've been doing this for so long. Yeah. I've been. Uh, see, I'm, I'm, all I'm, happiness I'm for me. I'm <laughs> relatively I'm relatively new, so I'm still just kind of learning the ropes of of how to do just basic business things and you know just simple marketing and you know, working out pricing and just all this kind of stuff. Cause it's, I, I came at this from a whole different angle, you know, this was, a, it was a hobby, you know, but once I decided to make this, you know, my, my job, then I had to learn how to do it. <laughs> well, certainly so. you're doing that well. I mean, given that given, it seems to me, but, um, I have to say that, um, I should, probably should have said marketing is my biggest challenge. Yeah. I basically don't do it. Yeah. I um, have been really fortunate um, that I haven't, it hasn't hurt me that I don't do it, oh, but I, um, I don't do it. I, um, and having said that, I do, well, I shouldn't say that because I'm um, on Instagram and. True. So I guess I you, do that. You, you share your images. I share and, my and images. And you hope that with that, then, you know, the business comes. You know, actually, that's not, Instagram for me is um, more about um, inspiration. I think there's so mm. many really incredible photographers out there. So kind of getting, you know, we taught, we were, before the show started, we were talking about how photographers are very isolated. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's about inspiration mm -hmm. um, and seeing what's happening in Poland and what are the wineries doing in Russia mm -hmm. and South Africa, South Af Australian winery, you right. know, what kind of work are they doing? Mm -hmm. And then the other p piece for me is seeing which images the, the people who follow me, what they respond to. And that's interesting information. That's good information for me. So I use it yes. as information and inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it'd be nice if it wound up being actually a marketing tool, but I don't see it that way at this point, mm -hmm. but maybe I would have more followers if I did. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't necessarily play the game too well, you know, the the marketing social media game too well. Um, and it's definitely something that I would like to be better at. But being good at social media means you're devoting a lot of time to it. Sure. Yeah. And that's yeah. not that's not my business. Yeah necessarily you yeah. know but that's not really where I want to devote yeah. a lot of my yeah. time so yeah. you know I, yeah. I, I try to share my work as much as possible yeah. and with the hopes that you know somebody new will like it and refer it and you know somehow I get some some money out of it you know? well you're definitely out there I mean I think you're a visible presence well so that's I, good. yeah I, yeah well, I, you know I try to and, and and of course the more you're the more you're out there the more you're out there you know mm -hmm. the more you you know as I'm as I'm out shooting, you know, events and meeting people, I'm 
out there shooting events and meeting people. And sure. so they might say, hey, you know what? You know, I've been needing a photographer, you know, or something like that. And here's my card, you know. So things like that happen a lot. And the more, like I said, the more you're out there, the more it, the more people you meet, the more potential there is to meet somebody who's going to need your service. So. And that's good. If that's your business model, that's, that's I, a I good way to go. I, I don't know if that's my business model. <laughs> I don't have a business model. I just, yeah, so... Um, the, um, yeah, so, so I, I think for, for me, um, marketing is, is probably the hardest part, you know, um, because I'm not, I'm not a very social person. I'm not a very forward, I'm not a very salesy type of person. So while I'm, there, there are a lot of photographers in this valley who are very good at that. They're much better at the marketing end than they are at the photography end, which is just, it hurts. It hurts me really, really bad, deeply. Um, when I see other photographers who I don't think are very good, or at least the work isn't very good, um, but yet they're getting a lot of the jobs. So um, that's, that's just me. I should, probably shouldn't have said that out loud. But um, the other thing I wanted to talk about um, was, uh, well, you actually kind of mentioned your, your website. Um, so. I know I'm actually I'm I'm I, I'm like tweaking my website all the time, you know, uploading as I if I have a really cool image that I think I took, <laughs> then I might throw it on there as part of the my revolving gallery, you know, or something. So, um, tell me tell me about your website. What would you like to know? Well, uh, <laughs> sorry. Who's it? Who's it through? Um, oh, okay. The, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you do you do it all yourself? Yes. Okay. I'm okay. sorry. I didn't know what you wanted. Yeah. Um, I. The host is called Blue Domain, B L U D O M A I, B L U D O M A I N, Blue Domain, and it's a great company geared toward photographers, but I think they have other businesses too. And the reason I, um, I've been using them for a long time, mm -hmm. so as you can tell, with things like that, I'm on the path of least resistance. Mm. I'm not, I don't know if it's the best one at this point, and it, it's still, they, still do a great job. I think my white, my website's easy to upload. I, as, as similar to my photography, I like the simplicity of my website mm -hmm. and I don't want a bunch of bells and whistles. Yeah. I just want the images to speak for themselves. And I figure, you know, my, again, my business model is quite different than yours. I just want a few clients that I work a lot with and mm -hmm. you, you're kind of more out there. So for me, it's not necessary to have, um, I don't know. It's not necessary to, maybe it is necessary to keep on refreshing it. But I do, yeah, yes, definitely I do put the images on myself. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's just a matter of when something happens that makes me think I should do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, which is kind of sad, but mm -hmm. I don't have like a regular scheduled. I do try to post on Instagram, I'd say every other day. Mm -hmm. I, and I, that, that is my discipline. Mm -hmm. And um, I certainly could easily do, Thank you for kind of bringing it up because mm -hmm. I certainly could post on my website kind mm -hmm. of at the same time mm -hmm. while I'm posting on Instagram because I'm posting images on Instagram that I um, am most drawn toward or mm -hmm. most compelling to me. So, mm -hmm. um, or I think are most you know most recently reflect my work. Yeah. But um, so I should do that. Thank you. Yes. But yeah, so Blue Domain's great. Uh, there are a bunch of bunch of. I don't think. I think the, the site costs $100 a year and then hosting is mm -hmm. $100 a year. Mm -hmm. So it's really inexpensive. I think um, I don't understand paying a lot of money for a website, mm -hmm. um, frankly, at this point. But I guess you do need someone. If, you know, I know how to upload my own images and I mm -hmm. know how to do that. Um, I suppose you do need someone who knows how to do that, but it's not hard. It's really basic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I use... Um company called Zenfolio. Yeah, Zenfolio. I um, them too. And I, I love their services that they have. So, I mean, I, that's how I deliver my images to the clients. That's how um, some clients pay for images all through that. Uh, that's how people order prints or, you know, if they want posters or anything else, they can do that all through the site. Um, it's, it's my backup. <laughs> you know, for all my images. Um, so for me, it's, it's, it works out well. It's not the prettiest website, and I'm, and I'm you know, um, I, I wish that they would kind of update their templates and so on. Um, 
but it's it's better than it was like a year or two ago. So they're updating their website, and so that kind of enhances my website too. So. So my business model again is different than mm -hmm. yours. So I use Dropbox, just mm -hmm. kind of giving people resources. Yeah. And um, Dropbox, um, and that's how I do 95% of my client delivery. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one of my backups. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a plug in to everybody that you, everyone should be also not only having their photos in a cloud, but I mean, even not photographers, anybody, everybody, yeah. and also on an external hard drive or some sort of external, yeah. um, you know, what, however you choose to do that, because um, we definitely need redundancy in our taking care of our photos. Yeah. Um, no question. And get those photos off your computer. That's my other plug. Yeah. Get the photos off your main computer. It's slowing your computer down. But anyway, uh, Dropbox is great. It's not perfect. I think there at some point will be a perfect solution <laughs> because it's such a big market. Yeah. But um, but it's really easy to share with clients. Yeah. And it's easy to and it is also you know a cloud so it is a it is a way to um to archive my photographs right yeah yeah i know we've 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 had a lot of questions in the past about storage and backing up and so on yeah so well, it's an important it's, topic oh, that no one wants to talk about but it's it's super important no absolutely yeah, yeah. absolutely especially yeah. you know as a photographer who needs to keep backups of those files you know because you never know when the client's going to come back and say hey you know what i changed computers and now i lost all your images and it's like is, well, is it, you know, that's my responsibility. But I've had clients. Yes, I mean, I, I had a client who had a fire in her home, yeah. and you know that's back in the film days. So I'm I'm in the film days. I'm in the dark. So that, actually, that's how, another way that we differ. I came through the whole darkroom process, mm -hmm. which I think when you made the comment that my photographs are. Um, you can identify my style. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that comes from the dark room, my darkroom days, for sure. Mm -hmm. And definitely there are... No, it's, um, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was thinking that it, your images have a film look to them. Well, thank, yeah. thank you again. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate it. But um, yeah, definite, definitely um, the dark... It, it definitely informs how I, how I shoot, how I... You know, one of the things about, and I know I'm kind of veering here, but about coming through a dark room is that you know that you want to get the best digital negative possible mm -hmm. now. Whereas I think a lot of people think, oh, I'll fix it in Photoshop. Right. <clears throat> but those of us who came out of the dark room know that you don't want to be messing with that image in no. the dark room. So mm -hmm. you want to get that best exposure. You want to just nail it. So sure. I think that's, that, that's a difference. And we're a kind of a dying breed, those of us who work in the dark room. Uh, yeah, or, yeah, and there, no, I, I know there so. is some research, especially at art schools, but but for the most part, it's yeah. um, no, it's it's very true, and you know I fall fall into that trap too, where I'm like, you know, um, on a photo shoot, and I just cannot get the light where I want it, you know, especially because if you know if you're out in the elements, you know, you're kind of not in total control of. You know, obviously, you're not in control of the environment and the light and where the sun's hitting and all this kind of stuff. There's three things that you can do to kind of overcome that, but sometimes, just on the spur of the moment, I'm just like, I, you know what, I could probably just fix that in Photoshop. You know, when I get home, you know, that sort of thing. I'll just kind of, you know, do a little dodging and burning and I'll tr turn that into something. You know, yeah. so I know that yeah. I can I can yeah, fall yeah, into yeah, that yeah, trap yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I try not to. I try to get it right in camera as much as possible. But there are times when. I also know that oh you know there's a there's a bottle in the background that's you know that's just in the way but it take me two seconds to clone that out. You well, know, and there are things that aren't beyond your control for yeah. sure. And that was the same when you were dealing with the film. I mean, yeah. you know, definitely, you know, there's never been absolute truth in photography that's mm -hmm. never existed. Yeah. So, but I was to say the other thing that um, which is a little different is that I print my own work. And so I have a um, huge Canon 8300, which looks like a coffin. Yeah. And um, so I, I don't, you know, you were saying with, with Zenfolio that you're, you know, you're kind of using that, but um, to, to um, when people order photographs right. from you, whereas I'm, you know, people are just contacting me and I'm right. printing. I'm uh -huh. just doing fine art prints. Yeah. So I'm not doing, you know, that whole, I'm not doing event photography right. where you, you know, need to be able to, have Uncle Joe be able to just buy a, a print, <laughs> right? So, you know, not that um, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's a good place. There's a place for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, they're absolutely. Luckily, there is a place yeah. for that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's where I get the the majority of my my money. Um, so we are uh, getting real we close to. Oh, we have a question. Cameras, or is it about vision? What 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 is it? Well, I'm a proponent of education. So. So the go go a little bit more into that. What is education? I think that what different so this world everybody has a camera everybody who has a phone has a camera so how so this world is filled with cameras there's not um, so if you're thinking if one is thinking about going into photography as a profession you need to differentiate yourself and one way to do that is to know what you're doing so um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah, that's, honestly, that's, that's it. That's, that's I, I guess nutshell, that sounds yeah. kind of um, basic, but um, so I think, you know, I went to, so I, I had a, a different career. I was an arts administrator, and then when I moved to Napa, I went to Napa College, fabulous photography department, and I took, you know, whatever years of classes. And, you know, I understand shutter speed. I understand, I understand when something is extremely backlit, how I can bring the shadows back in. I mean, I understand, so you could put me in almost any lighting situation and I can, I can deal with it. I can be very intentional with it. So once you have education and you know what you're doing, I don't, I don't think you can do anything until you know how to use your tools. I don't think you can be intentional as a professional until you know how to use those tools, until you understand very instinctively as well. So you need to be able to respond very quickly. You know, you can't be with a client and say, well, let me think about how, how in the world, let's see, there's this funky lighting right there and I need to bring the shadow in and, I, and you, you know, you just need to know what you're doing or you need to know, okay, we need to move you this way. I mean, and it's, and it's all very quick. And if, mm -hmm. and if you don't know what you're doing, I don't know how you do. I don't know how people deal with that. So I say first you need education, and then once you understand your tool, then I think you need to take ten thousand photographs, yeah. fifty thousand photographs, and then third, did you really want this whole thing? The third, I think you need to be um, very self-critical, and love what you love, set it aside, come back, and then look at it the next day and see if it still holds up for you. If you're lucky enough, surround yourself with other people whose opinion you respect and who will be critical with you, critical in a supportive way, and help you um, help you refine your craft. And then once you have all of that, then you start seeing, okay, what resonates for me, and what is my vision, and how can I, I how can I be intentional about this photograph? How how can I tell the story I want to tell? through this photograph. And um, it's very, very deliberate, it's very intentional. And I think once you're there, then you can start putting yourself out there. Because then otherwise, what are you offering to clients? Yeah. And as far as uh, um, you guys talked about marketing and all that, I'm sure, that, I'm, I'm sure this is like a, <clears throat> a big part of, 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 of your business. Um, however, um, what besides that? What is the most challenging issues or uh, that you guys have? And this is good for the question for you or Bob, you know, to uh, keep the vision. Or do you have to reinvent yourself, or do you or have to reinvent, 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 yeah, yourself? Or I am. We can both answer this. Obviously, I am very true to myself, and I think when someone hires me, they know what they're getting. I mean, it's not, I don't do like frou-frou, I don't do bunnies and flowers, it's not interesting to me. I, my images are very simple, they're so, um, I don't have to reinvent myself, but what I do have to do is push myself, and I do that every single photo shoot. I mean, I kind of have a series, and that's, again, that's another hour-long conversation, but um, Every single photo shoot, if I haven't pushed the envelope, then I'm not happy with myself. So I don't want to be bored myself. So if, and I'd say, I mean, maybe, I mean, even with bottle shots, I don't want to be bored, but that may be the one little, you know, there's a little bit of a standardization there. Bottle shots in the studio, I should say. But um, there's a little bit of, of what's acceptable. But besides that, I want to deliver images to my client that, um, you know, that, that a range of Im images 
but there's got to be some here that may be a little bit pushing the client too, pushing me and the client. Mm. They may be rejected. That's fine. But if I haven't done that, then I'm not happy. Well, let's talk about this, you know, because Bob takes a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, pictures, uh, bottle pictures, and you do too. And uh, but a picture is a picture. No, I mean, especially the bottle picture. I mean, this is a label, this is the bottle, this is a cork, this is a... So why don't you look so into what, my bottles? Because what, actually... <laughs> I, I'm just... I mean, I'm, 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 I'm actually I'm, serious. No, no, no. Can I, you I, go I, into I, my I, bottles? Because that, that would be a good example of a range. Um, it's under portfolio right. and then bottles. I mean, yes, um, te technically anybody could go in there and just with their iPhone and take a picture of a bottle, but it, it's, it, it, it creates... You so need to... Is, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, so, well, that's fair. So I, I'd say, um, it, it's without being, you know, that's not insulting or anything like that. It seems, it seems, it seems to me, and just you know, me, and and I'm learning here, um, that you guys are trying to achieve the same thing, but you may be taking different routes. And I'd like to know, like you know, what kind of routes you're taking? Now, how do you uh, get yourself prepared for a ball shot? You know, and how Bob is getting. And, and, and how Bob get prepared for a bottle shot? You know, what is a bottle shot for you guys? Well, for me, it depends. I am, I hope I am a very good listener. It really depends on what the client wants to convey, what the client's image is, what the, and even within the, the, um, the branding of the client, even, you know, they're, so maybe one thing one time and another thing another time. Do they want to be mysterious? Do they want to be like super clear? Do they want to be evocative? Do they want to just have a shadow of a bottle and a sexy woman? Do they just want to have, um, sometimes I just use textures. I photographed out here one of your, early in the morning, I want, there were just, there was like some metal out there with some bottles. It just was evocative for me mm -hmm. with, with a, a particular bottle. Um, so it really depends on what the client wants to convey for that marketing piece or that for their image. And again, it may be just like here's a straight, you know, straight bottle, or it may be more. Um, ooh, I want to kind of sink into you. Um, <laughs> so it, so, so the I guess the answer is if anyone could do it with an iPhone, there wouldn't be any work for photographers. Probably, right. um, I find, at least with my clients, and again, we work really differently. That when um, they've tried to do that, they've often then come to me because they they really can't. I mean, they really can't. And part of it is also the tools. I mean, we're you know we know what lenses to use. You know we you know what cameras to use. And then as, as Bob said, for me, part of it is my post-processing. Well, they really can't do that. Yeah. I mean, that's something that um, mine's gonna be different than Bob's, it's gonna be different than another photographer's. Right. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. That was great. And I've, I've gotta wrap it up. <laughs> but um, I, mm, I have so much more to talk about. I know. Let's keep on talking. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk after the cameras. Yeah. So, um, Again, I wanted to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, thank you for the helicopter for flying by. Um, uh, so my show, the Catch Light Show, is every third Monday of the month at 4 p.m. Pacific. Tune in live on tootsuite.com, or um, if you're in the Napa area, you're free to come on by and hop in the studio. And then, um, of course, afterward, we'll have it on, on YouTube. So everybody in the world, Thank you very much. You're awesome. Awesome. You're awesome. Yeah, you guys are all awesome. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>